What's going on, Vault Dwellers? It's Top Ranking Noob, and I'm back at it again with another helpful video for Fallout 76. Hey, if you guys want to check out some cool Fallout 76 gear, make sure you head on over to U4GM. I'm going to be putting their link down in the description, along with a coupon code that's going to be saving you 5%. Today, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the Raider Under Armour. I'm going to be showing you where to get the plans to craft Under Armour, where you're going to get the plans to craft the mods for the Under Armour, what resources you're going to need. I'm also going to be putting links down to my other Under Armour videos into the description, so if Raider Under Armour is not your cup of tea, go check those out as well. If you guys find this video helpful, please smash that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. With all of that being said, let's get started. Now, Raider Under Armour is pretty straightforward to get when you first get out of the vault. What I like to do is shortly after you get out of the vault, go to Sutton Station, which is just uh, southeast of Vault 76. You want to come here as early as possible to buy the first two tiers of Raider Under Armour. If you go to this vendor, the first Under Armour that he's going to sell you is the Treated Lining Under Armour mod. He's also going to sell you plans for different kinds of Raider Under Armour to include Long Johns, Harness, uh, Raider Leathers, and Road Leathers. They're all going to be essentially the same, slightly different cosmetics, but when you mod them, they're going to equal all the same. You want to purchase the Treated Lining first and foremost, and you do want to learn this mod. Because after you learn this mod, we're going to log out, we're going to log back in, and we're going to buy the Resistance Lining Under Armour mod. If you don't learn the Treated mod, then he's not going to sell you the Resistance mod. He's going to sell you the Treated again. So buy that Treated Lining, learn it, and then log out, log back in, and purchase the Resistance Lining mod. Once you've learned the first and second tier, you've learned that treated, you've learned that resistance, it's time to learn the third and fourth tier. And this is where things can get complicated. From reports, it, said, it seems that the highest drop rate for the third and fourth tier is going to be through storyline quests, for Rosie's storyline quest. Now, Rosie is a robot raider that's located on the top of the world. She's got the highest drop rates for the third and fourth tier. That's going to be the protective lining and the shielded lining. Now, she's got the highest drop rates for the reward missions. You complete her missions, and you have the chance of being rewarded those tiers. But even with that, it's not guaranteed. Those are just your best odds. If you've already progressed through that storyline or you just did it now and she still hasn't rewarded you with either one of those, it's not the end of the world. We can still get these drop rates. Uh, the most common location most people go to farm these is an event called Uranium Fever. Uh, those have got the most reported drops for both the protective and the shielding linings for Raider Under Armour. But even with those, they're not necessarily the only event. I shouldn't say that's the, not the only event that it can drop on. Mostly what you're going to want to do is go to anything on the right hand side of the map. Any event in the Savage D Divide has a chance of dropping those linings, or I should say those lining plans. So aside from just grinding Uranium Fever, try to make sure that you're hitting the other events in the Savage Divide, such as Distant Thunder, One Violent Night, Surfaced Air, Irrational Fear, so on and so forth. Basically just about anything on the right side of the map. Any of those events you're going to want to grind in an attempt to uh, loot the Protective Lining and the Shielded Lining. And they are rare drops, so this could take quite a bit of grinding. Now, the reason why I do like Raider Under Armour is because it's pretty straightforward to get. As I mentioned, you can get the plans for these Under Armours at Sutton Station as well. There's slightly different cosmetic differences, but when they're, uh, when they're modded, they're all the same. So we got a Harness, for example, Long Johns. Uh, we have Raider Leathers, and we also have Road Leathers. And in order to craft these, it could take a slightly different uh, materials, but we're just looking at some real basic materials. Cloth, leather, steel, things along them lines. So it doesn't take a whole lot to craft. The coolest ones, I think, are the Road Leathers, but this goes under your armor, and it goes under your outfits as well, so it really doesn't matter which one you craft. Now, once you're fortunate enough to loot the protective lining mod plan, go into your inventory and learn it. Otherwise, you're never going to uh, loot the shielded mod 
the shielded lining. Now, there were some people in some of my prior comments that told me, I shouldn't say there was some, I think there was one comment that mentioned he learned the shielded without knowing the protective. I myself haven't experienced that and it's really not worth testing out in my mind. So if you get the protective, learn it, that way you have better odds of looting the shield. Once you've finally looted the Shield Raider Under Armour lining, you're ready to learn the plan. Let's go take a look at some of the materials that we're going to need in order to craft this. Now, most of the materials are pretty basic, especially for the first and second tier. All we're going to need is ballistic fibers and cork. For the third and fourth tier, we're going to need fluorescent flux. I should say pure fluorescent flux, which is actually one of the easier flux to get. If somebody just so happens to nuke white springs, a lot of the floral there is going to give us that fluorescent flux so we can craft that. But more importantly, as we can see, the shielded lining is going to give us 10 damage resistance, 5 energy resistance, and of course, plus 3 perception, plus 3 agility and plus one luck. So this makes the Raider Under Armour a great option, especially for those playing stealth builds. Now, in order to get these items, in order to get like the um, ballistic fibers, one of my favorite places to go is Camp McClintock. Camp McClintock is gonna have a few of those ammo pouches laying around. And of course, those ammo pouches, when we break them down, are gonna have the ballistic fibers that we need in order to craft this. Once we have the ballistic fibers, we just need some cork and maybe some fluorescent flux. As luck would have it, somebody dropped a nuke on white springs, which is where I'm going to go for both of these. Now, golf balls are going to have cork in them, so you want to collect a lot of these. And no surprise, the golf course is a great place to pick up golf uh, balls. Uh, this is a little putting green uh, close to the service entrance that you can go. We don't need too many of these, but just run around, grab up some golf balls. There's a couple of baskets laying around, and usually the baskets have like four or five or or six of these golf balls in them so it should only take you about two or three minutes to collect enough golf balls for this after that what we need is fluorescent flux and since white springs is new uh nuked all we need to do is find these flowers here I, i'm gonna try to pronounce them radiodendon or something radiodon i don't know how to pronounce that but the the white springs is littered with these so we can collect quite a bit in order to get all the materials we need to craft the raider under armor sets of course, as you're harvesting those random flowers, make sure you got the green thumb equipped because you're going to pick up twice as much radodendron fluorescent flux when you loot them. Uh, when we're crafting them, we also want to make sure that we equip another perk card called Super Duper. What that's going to do is it's going to give us the opportunity or the chance to actually craft two flux instead of just one. So with that said, let's go to our chemistry station. We're going to go into the nuked floral. And in order to craft this fluorescent flux, we're going to need glowing mass, parting mass, highly radiate, high radiation fluid, and then, of course, the raw fluorescent flux. All of these can be found in a nuked zone. So, of course, we're going to pick the flowers for the flux, but enemies are going to randomly drop the glowing mass, the hardened mast, and the high radiation fluid. So while you're there, make sure you grind some enemies and collect as much as that as you can because we're going to need at least four pure fluorescent fluxes in order to craft the shielded writer under armor lining. Now, something weird happens occasionally to where it won't let you craft the Raider Under Armour, even if you have all the materials. If you see that it doesn't allow you to craft it, even though you have the materials, go into your stash box and actually pull out the required materials from your stash box and put them on your personal inventory. And this will usually allow you to craft that armor. So it's not that you have to collect more, you just have to pull it out of your stash box. Seems like a bit of a glitch, but it is what it is, and that's the workaround. And that's all the information I got for the Raider Under Armour. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys are interested in more Under Armour videos, check out the description. I'll put what I have so far, and I'm still going to be doing videos for the casual, as well as what other one am I missing? I got the casual and the marine wetsuit. So keep an eye out for those videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.